In this last lesson on the reactivity of aromatics, we're going to move away from electrophilic aromatic substitution and focus on other reaction types in which aromatics can engage. The first reaction type we're going to focus on is nucleophilic aromatic substitution, which is characteristic of strongly electron-poor or electron-withdrawn aromatic compounds. Nucleophilic substitution is a reaction we've seen before in detail in a tetrahedral context, and we've actually touched on it a little bit with diazoniums in an aromatic context. But this reaction can be useful synthetically since the nucleophiles that come in are not typically groups that we can add through electrophilic means. We'll also talk about reactions involving a rather exotic intermediate derived from aromatic compounds containing a triple bond of sorts within the ring known as benzynes, and we'll look at a reduction reaction of benzene to a non-conjugated diene. This is called the Birch reduction, and the interesting thing about this reaction is that First of all, it uses the same conditions as dissolving metal reduction of alkynes, which we've seen before. And like that reaction, it leads to partial reduction from a compound with three double bonds, in a sense, to a compound with only two. The other interesting thing about this is that it creates a non-conjugated diene, since there are two sp3 hybridized carbons in this product. All in all, these, gonna, these reactions are going to help us round out our understanding of aromatic reactivity and give us some additional synthetic tools to produce some interesting products from benzene and related starting materials. We encountered Sandmeyer reactions in previous discussions of substitution reactions involving the diazonium group. Sandmeyer reactions are characterized by the involvement of a copper salt where the anion is either bromide, chloride, or cyanide. And the overall reaction type looks like nucleophilic aromatic substitution since this X anion is substituting for N2+, a good leaving group. In this video, we'll revisit this reaction type and look at the mechanism in detail. This is actually a radical mechanism, not quite the two-electron nucleophilic aromatic substitution mechanism that we've seen before. Instead, it's what's called SRN1, since a nucleophile is substituting, but by a radical mechanism. As in the case of SN1 and SN2 that we've encountered previously, the 1 indicates that the rate-determining step here is unimolecular, involving a single molecule. The term Sandmeyer reaction actually refers to a set of reactions involving the combination of an aryl diazonium salt, which is usually just generated and not actually isolated, with a copper 1 halide, chloride or bromide specifically, or cyanide. Although these reactions resemble traditional nucleophilic aromatic substitutions because the group that substitutes X is an anion and is thus nucleophilic, the mechanism here is a little bit more complicated. It involves a series of radicals in a process that's called SRN1, where the R stands for radical. To draw this mechanism, I'm going to skip over the formation of the diazonium, which we've seen in a previous video, and start from the diazonium intermediate. In practice, this would be generated from a solution of the aniline in water with NaNO2 and H2SO4 dissolved, and we would keep that at zero degrees C to generate and stabilize the diazonium. In the first step of this process, the copper 1 halide transfers a single electron to the diazonium salt. And you can think of this as a pretty straightforward redox process. There's actually an electron transfer that's going on. Steps of this type are referred to as single electron transfer, or SET steps. Because the electron is negatively charged, this turns the diazonium into a neutral diazo radical with this structure. This step also generates a copper 2 species with copper and X still bound, but the copper now with a positive formal charge. The next step is one we're familiar with from a radical context, homolytic cleavage of the carbon-nitrogen bond, and this is driven primarily by the formation of nitrogen gas, which bubbles out of solution. Because one of the products is a gas that escapes solution, this step is essentially irreversible, and it generates a phenyl radical, which is a key intermediate. At this point, the copper-2 halide species that we generated after single electron transfer couples to the phenyl radical, forming the new carbon X bond. This step generates the substituted aromatic product and also releases copper plus, or copper 1 ion. What this shows is that the reaction is actually catalytic in copper 1 ion, and so it's possible to use only a catalytic amount of the copper halide salt, along with a stoichiometric amount of the nucleophile with some other cation that may be cheaper, such as sodium cation. On the whole, if we focus on what's happened in this reaction, the N2 plus group has been replaced with a good nucleophile, X minus. And this X group in Sandmeyer reactions can be bromine, chlorine, or cyanide. 
And so this gives us access to a completely new substituent in the cyano group, but provides a convenient alternative to installing bromine and chlorine when electrophilic aromatic substitution may not give the right substitution pattern, right? Or something along these lines. Since we're installing at a position where an electron withdrawing group is located, and this could be generated from an aniline, as shown up here, we can get bromine or chlorine in a position where we had a nitrogen in the first place. And that can be a useful transformation.